everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and we're going to look at EIGRP distribute lists. And this is probably going to be a multi-part video. I'm going to keep this one very simple. We're going to use a distribute list in conjunction with an access list. So what a distribute list does is it is a way of controlling, that is permitting or denying, EIGRP updates coming in or out of a router. Now, why would you do this? Well, it allows you to control what other routers will see about your network. So what I could do is I could set a distribute list on R2 and normally we would be advertising this loop back to R1. So R1 is able to ping our, this loop back. What we can do is set up a distribute list to say, okay, well, I'm, I'm still going to talk to R1. I'm still going to be the EIGP neighbor. That's not a problem. I'm going to tell him about my side of 10, 10, 12, 2. So that's not a problem either but I'm going to stop information about this network 2222 from hitting R1. So let's see how we could do this. We've got our routers already up and I'm just continuing on from the last video which we set our neighbor statement. So let me just show you our running config as far as EIGRP is concerned. Hit space a couple times. So this is our config, router one EIGRP, network call zeros, no auto summary, neighbor 10.10.12.2, going out fast ethernet zero zero. And then on R2 side, basically things are reversed for this neighbor statement. It's neighbor 10, 10, 12, one fast ethernet zero zero. So we already have our connection, show IP route, everything's great there, show IP protocols, everything's good. And I can ping the loop back of the other side. So everything's very nice. I'm gonna go over to R2. And the first thing when you're doing a distribute list, the first thing you should do is for set up the access list if you're going to use that particular method of distribute list. So I'm going to set an access list one and I'm going to permit 10, 10, 12, 2. And that's it. So by default, if you remember your access list stuff, at the end of every access list is a deny all. So it denies everything else. So information, you could think of it is, it is actually saying deny 2222 at the end of this, but we don't have to type that in. Then we're gonna go back into EIGRP. I'm gonna type in this very simple command, distribute, do a question mark there, distribute list. So it's distribute dash list. And you can see here it asks for an access list. You could use an expanded access list you could call the access list by name. You could use a prefix, prefix list, or you could use a route map. So the reason there are so many options here, it gives you a lot of flexibility. And you really have to know this because in the CCIE lab, if you're going for the CCIE lab, they might tell you do a distribute list, but don't use a route map. Okay, if it says no route map, then you could use a prefix list or an access list. Or they could be really tricky and they could say, don't use a route map or prefix list. And then you'll be like, okay, the only thing I can use is an access list. Or they might be, you know, they could switch it around. They could say access list and prefix list. So you just have to find the one that they are allowing. Okay, so distribute list one, which is the number of our access list. Hit a question mark and we are filtering things from going out. Distribute list one outbound. Let's see if anything comes after that. We could do a lot more stuff, but you could see here, CR, carriage return, we can hit enter right there. And after we set a distribute list in a couple seconds, you should see, actually, since we're doing a neighbor statement, nothing, oh, okay, you can see there. Our neighbor is reset. I was kind of worried there, that was taking a, a while. Okay, exit out. So show IP EIGRP topology. We still see router one, the loopback of router one. So that's good, I can still ping it. Basically everything on my side should still be normal. Show IP protocols. This should be okay here. And let's take a look at the running config to see how that distribute list looks like space a couple times and you can see here this is our EIGRP section here router EIGRP that's normal 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 and the only thing that's different is the distribute list one out and somewhere here is our access list 
Access list one permit 101012, so that's good. Let's see if anything is different on router one. Go over to router one and let's see, show IP route. Let's start off with that. And you can see here our route to the loopback of router two, the 222 address, 2222 address is gone. Obviously we cannot ping it. And so that's that's pretty cool. Let's show IP EIGP neighbor. And we still have our neighbor. We could still ping the other side. So that's good. And if we do a show IP EIGP topology, you can see that we know about ourselves, our own loopback. We know about the link, but that's about it, which is pretty nice. Let's see, show IP EIGP topology. Let's do all links. See if that gives us any different. Nope, everything looks the same there. So we are getting updates from R2 and just to prove that to you. And so you might be thinking, oh, maybe that access list, maybe that distribute list is not just blocking all twos, maybe it's blocking everything. Well, you can quickly verify that by doing a debug IP packet and we'll let that run for about uh, five to 10 seconds and then we'll stop it. There we go, we'll stop it. And you can see here, we still are getting updates from router two. So 10.10.12.2 going to 10.10.12.1, which is us. So EIGP is still running. We still have a neighbor relationship. Everything works well, except that we cannot get to the all twos address because we're not getting the update. Now that distribute list doesn't stop all traffic, all it does is stop the routing update. If I wanted to get to the loopback, but let's say the lab exam says I can't do any EIGP changes to, you know, to accomplish that, I could simply enter in a default route if the lab allowed it. So let me show you what I mean here. We do a conf t. Let's do IP route 0000, all zeros, and we're going to go Put a next top of 10, 10, 12, 2. And we'll just hit enter right there. Sure, I'll show IP route. So now we have a default route heading towards R2. And now if I ping the all twos address, I am golden, right? So that distribute list, it's just for EIGP updates. If you have a static route going out there, you'll still hit that loop back. Maybe you've got an OSPF uh, routing protocol that might might work if you're using rip that also might work so just be a little careful there in this case it's just eigrp that's stopping its update from coming to you and also going outbound from router 2 so it's pretty pretty neat stuff now we can change this around let me get rid of the distribute list on r2 so I'm going to kill the access list and distribute list. So no access list one, uh, permit 10, 10, 12, 2. Go into EIGP, router EIGP one, no distribute list one, fast zero, zero. No distribute list one, out fast zero zero or no distribute list one out that's all we need okay show ip route just to make sure everything's good so things good we've got a, a connection to router one everything's synced up and let me show run just to make sure that my config is clean and router edgerp Okay, everything looks good there, and no access list. Okay, so let's change things up. Before we did distribute list one out, let's see if we can block stuff from coming in. Okay, so you're on R2, and you want to block the update of this loopback coming inbound. So R1 still thinks everything's normal. It still sends it out. Life is good, but you are going to refuse to accept it on R2. Well, it's very easy. You know, we'll go back to R2. We're going to make an access list to block the all ones address. So this is dirt simple. It's access list one, deny, 
one 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 actually there's a couple ways to do this let's just let's do it opposite let's permit 10 10 12 1 and then it's just going to deny all ones after that now we're going to go into router eigrp and we're going to do distribute list one in so that's going to allow fast zero zero from r1 to come in but it's going to deny the update for loopback zero so we'll fire that up, exit, exit. Wait a couple seconds for the routers to sync up. And it's syncing up, hopefully, there we go. And then if we show IP route, you can see here our loopback for R1 has disappeared, which is pretty nice. Yet if I do a show IP eIGRP topology, everything's still okay there, except for the all ones address. If I show IP eIGRP neighbor, we still have a neighbor at R1. So it accomplishes sort of the same thing from R2's perspective. We are killing the loopback from R1. So whether you want to deny it going out or deny it going inbound, you know, it's going to be up to your lab in how they say that. They might say you are you can't use a deny statement. Well, okay, you have to sort of you might have to go the other route. Or they might say you cannot set anything on R2. Well, if you can't set anything on R2, then you go to R1. You know, so you just have to play around with the wording and sort of decipher what Cisco wants to, you know, wants you to do. All right, so that was a quick video on distribute lists. This is going to be part one of distribute lists. In the next part, I will do uh, either prefix lists or route maps, uh, either one, and we'll try more complicated scenarios. Thanks for watching.